questions or concerns about that? Everybody good with that? Okay, good. Because if you are not vaccinated on the 27th of September, we will have to withdraw you from the, the college. And, and this is, now that the FDA has approved the vaccination, it falls under the same guidelines as MMR, any vaccination that a student would have to have to come here. So um, if nobody is really concerned about that, then that's about as far as I really need to take it right now. Um, but there, you know, there have been in some, you know, some concerns about the vaccine. So um, I'm happy if, if you're all vaccinated, we are strongly encouraging it. Um, there is information that you can provide to our registrar's office with your vaccine information. If you have done that, great. If you haven't done that, if you could do that, that would be perfect. Um, Arlene also, Ms. Spencer has given a, um, in your packet, there's a Vax um, PowerPoint presentation that takes you through um, getting into the database and, and becoming, you know, the, having your um, information logged. And then we can reach out to the Department of Health to get that information, which we have been doing all along with our registered students, just so we have a record of it. So we'll we'll keep in touch with students as we go along with this, but it's, um, of course, the timing of it is never good. It's been a, a crazy summer, and uh, we're hoping that we can have a very safe campus. The other thing that we are going to do starting on September 1st um, is we are going to ask all students to wear masks when they're indoors. Um, and that's just, that's just a good safety precaution. So um, we want to keep everybody in classes and healthy while you're here. So that will be, that will be in place. So you guys are all in like computer science majors or is that what you're all studying? I'm, I'm a computer technology. Awesome. I'm a computer education. Educate. All right. Awesome. But you're able to come today for orientation, which is great. All right. Awesome. Well, I know that we have some great um, opportunities for speakers today to talk to you about some of our academics. And um, I can just tell you that um, Fulton Montgomery Community College is a small college that puts a big emphasis on student success. So I'm so happy you made a great decision to come here and um, I don't wanna take up a lot more of your time because you have a busy day ahead. So unless you have any questions for me, my office, by the way, is right in the FM Welcome Center. Um, I am available at any time for any student. If you have something that comes up that you feel needs my attention, I am here for you, that's my job. So um, anything, anything you need, come and see me. I love to have students come in and visit. So, all right, thank you very much. And I hope you all have a great semester. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speakers are going to be from our Opportunity Grants programs. We've got Jean and Audrey. Hi. 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 Hey, everybody. Um, so I'm Audrey. And I'm Jean. <laughs> and, and we're the Audrey and Jean show. <laughs> so we're going to shark tank a little bit. Like we're going to come out and do it. It is sort of like a shark tank kind of uh, vibe. Um, first, we want to say welcome to FM. We're really, really happy to see students in person. And I'm sure you've heard this before, the long, hard year last year, being remote, not having students. Um, so we're really happy you're here. But what we're, we're here to do is we're, we're here to describe to you two opportunity programs we have on campus that you might qualify for. We'll let you know how to join them and um, also the perks and benefits of uh, being in the program. So, Odd, should I just, yeah, just jump right in? All right, I'll just, I'll just jump right in. So, the opportunity programs we offer are our TRIO opportunity programs, our TRIO student support services programs. We have two of those. And then we also have a New York State educational opportunity program, otherwise known as EOP. So, both the programs serve a certain group of students on campus. We can't serve everybody on campus but we have certain students we can serve. So you might wonder, well, why, why is that? Why can't you serve everyone? Because the federal and state governments have given the campus extra money to help certain students on campus. So then in your mind, you're probably thinking, okay, who are those students? Why, why are you helping these students? Who are they? Do I qualify? Well, to get into the TRIO program, there are three ways you could get in. And you could be any one of these. The first is a first-generation college student. 
Now, when I first came to FM to be the director of the TRIO program, and I read in the ad in the paper that it served first-generation college students, I thought, oh, is that like some kind of like immigration status or something? No, it's got nothing to do with that. All that means is that neither one of your parents has a bachelor's degree. So if you have parents who maybe came to FM, maybe they got an associate's degree, you would still be considered a first-generation college student. Or if you had parents who took some college at the four-year level but never graduated with a four-year degree, you also would be considered a first-generation college student. So that's one way to get into TRIO. The second way would to be, be income qualified. So if you filled out the FAFSA and the New York State TAP application, and you're in a situation where you're getting significant aid to come to FM, you probably qualify for our, our TRIO and EOP programs under our economic qualifying. And then the third way to get into our programs is to be a student with a disability. Now this can be a learning, a physical, or a mental disability. And those are the three ways that you could get in. Now you don't need to have all three of them. All you need to have is just one of those. And the New York State EOP program, you do have to be in your first semester of college ever. So that's an additional qualifier to get into those. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Arj to tell you a little bit about why you might join because we get the money to help these students but what do we do with these students what are the advantages of being in our program thanks Jean. so our trio student support services program we help students in a number of ways um, so we have tutoring uh, do any of you have math this semester no math no okay we got so math tutoring is really popular with our our trio student support um, services program. We have academic advisors that just meet with our TRIO students, so you get more one-on-one -on -one attention um, from your advisor. We can help with transferring to a four-year school when you're when you're finishing up at FM. Do any of you want to transfer to a four-year school when you're done? Yep. Okay. So we can help you through that process as well. Um, how many of you are looking to get a job right out of FM? Okay. Yeah, so we can help you with that process um, also. So um, we, we have free printing, which is really popular with our students. We do a survey every year of our, of our students and what they, what they liked about our program, and 100% of our TRIO students love our free printing. So that's really popular. It always sounds a little lame when we describe it to new students, but believe me, after you've been here a little while, you're like, oh yeah, that's The things program, that you get excited printing? about. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So that is something, and we have a space in the library where um, up on the second floor where we have computers and couches and just places for you to relax and get your homework done because you know I don't know about you guys but it's it's really hard for me to focus when I get home so it's nice when you can get things done here on campus and uh, just lots of love and support and also we have you know coffee which also helps uh, so there's a lot of perks of being in our programs uh, but mostly it's that love and support and just you know, encouragement to help you get through. Yep. And I think the biggest selling point for our program is that um, our students always describe us as like a family on campus. We're your campus family. Um, we're here with you when you're struggling, when it's hard and you need somebody to say, nope, you can do this. We're also here to celebrate when things are going great and give you a, a great high five for, you know, a test that you passed that you didn't think you were going to pass. Um, so that's really our biggest draw, that connection on campus. So if you're looking for a place on campus that you can go to a one-stop shop where you know you can come to us, you can ask us a question, if we don't have the answer, we will help you find the answer. That's the way we operate. So the last question you should have is, okay, sounds great, how should I join, how can I join, how can I get in? It's really easy. In your packets, there should be a sheet with a QR code with uh, TRIO and EOP, I think they were. Yeah, I think there's the like packets. a nice light blue color on there. Yeah. Yep. And a QR code, perfect. And it has just a synopsis of the things we already told you about. The application is really easy. You can do it on your smartphone. Um, 
once you submit that, we will receive it. Um, I, as director, will just make sure you qualify, and then the next step will just be a one-on-one -on -one appointment with one of us to make sure we get you the resources you need to be successful. So it's that easy. Well, you might be wondering, what is in this bag? Well, we've got some. Which one is going to be Mark Cuban? Yeah. Which one is going to be, what's the, Mr. Wonderful? Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so just got some questions for you guys. So raise, you know, raise your hand. Um, how do I qualify for the trio program? If you answer this correctly, you, you get, get a prize. A prize. <laughs> yes. If you're a first generation. Ding ding ding. Any other ones? Yeah. If you have like a disability. Okay. Ding 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 ding. ding. What the other? Well. Oh, you wanted oh, all three? I wanted all three. Oh. Got the, no? Yeah, financially. Whoa! Okay. Okay, I was, yeah, I was trying to say that. <laughs> Woo! Okay. You know what? Well, well we're going to have to. Okay, I'm going to have to go get some more prizes. Yes. Okay. Three prizes. So, we um, we are. <laughs> here, I'm going to come back. But. And then, okay, somebody give me like one perk of being in trio. Free printing. Yeah, I knew she was going to say that. Awesome. I knew it. That's the one everybody walks away with. Okay, fantastic. So, but I'm it's also family get, on campus as well. Ooh, and that's our biggest. One. That's our biggest yes. one. Okay. Um, any questions about what we told you? Any? Yeah. Any questions? No. And where do you find them? Second floor of the library. Yes. So our first, first floor. Yes, my my son is on the first floor now, but second floor is our trio penthouse. Yes. Are you guys here all day? Like yeah. After orientation. Yeah. 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 Please. Yeah. yeah. If you want to stop by, if you take a tour of campus, have they already toured? Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know if you've been in the library. You might have seen the trio sign. That's, that's yeah. Where it is, and my office is right next to the writing center. Yeah. That's where you can. That's awesome. Cool. So you have I'm gonna stop the prize. No, we're gonna come back. You come come back, but you don't have enough. I don't have enough. Yeah. She's going to be back. So just pop you in any time, Audrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys I'm will sure get you guys your prizes. Be happy to see me. I'll be right back. Okay. So somebody fund us on Shark Tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So actually, when they were talking about financial aid, I remember that the Office of Financial Aid wants to see you. If you have not already filed for uh, FAFSA, uh, please do so. They don't actually have to see you. You just have to go and file for your FAFSA. And even if you don't qualify, you think, oh, I make too much money. My parents make too much money. I'm not going to qualify for federal aid. They want you to file anyway. Uh, for example, my daughter, who's out there helping, volunteering today, as a perk of working here, she gets to have free tuition. They want her to file anyway because of the federal stimulus money that's coming. And the only way students will get that federal stimulus money is if you file a FAFSA form. Even if you don't get Pell or TAP as a, as a result, you're going to be able to get that federal stimulus money, which I don't know, but they've been pretty good-sized checks the last couple of rounds. So please do that. It's free. It's easy enough to file. I have started it for her, but I have to finish it. Um, but just a plug in there to do your FAFSA form. Um, everybody likes to have a nice check come November, right? So, uh, at this point, we're going to have some introductions from our faculty members, and we have a faculty member who's live and in person. <laughs> Marty Waffle is here, and he's from our computer science department. And then we have a couple of messages from some other faculty as well. So with a show of hands, how many are here with maybe some interest in computer-related programs? Okay, so a good number. All right, so I'm going to just do a little presentation. At any point, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to stop me um, and ask your question. Don't wait to the end. Um, if you have something, just go ahead and ask right away. 
so yeah, welcome today. Um, I'm sure you're going to meet a lot of people and see a lot of things here on campus. Um, I would have said, when they asked the question about like what's one of the biggest perks about the TRIO program, I would have said free coffee. I can't believe that one snuck by you guys. <laughs> but that is a big one. Um, so yeah, again, I'm going to talk about three programs. We, at FM, we have three different programs that are computer-related fields, right? So we have computer science, and I'll go through what the differences are at a high level if you want more detail. I did give out handouts for each of the programs, which would provide you the actual courses and the semester that we recommend that you take those courses. All right. Uh, talk about computer networking and cybersecurity, which is our newest program. That's only a couple of years old and computer information systems, which was uh, one of our oldest programs, but it's constantly updated as technology changes. So again, my name is Marty Waffle. Um, I've been here uh, 21 years, just like Jane Kelly had mentioned when she started. So I, uh, I'll be starting my 22nd year. That's full time, but I did participate as an adjunct professor here as well for about four years. So I've been associated with this campus for about 25 years now. Um, I'm also the technology division chair, so there are many programs um, in addition to the computer related programs that I also uh, am connected to as the division chair. So if you have questions about those programs, for example, uh, our multimedia program, um, if you have questions about our electronics program, even though that's in a different division now, I can answer questions about those programs as well. Okay. So one of the things that I like to talk about uh, when you're deciding on a career, and I know many of you have already picked a program, uh, but you know, you, there, there are things that you need to consider about that program. Number one, um, is it something that you will enjoy doing? That could be a hard one to answer. I think another important question to answer is, can I get a job when I graduate, right? When I graduate from either FMCC or from a four-year school. So you have to have opportunity. And another thing that, you know, I feel somewhat important, maybe not the most important, uh, can I make money doing it? So I'm happy to say that in the fields that I uh, prepare students to enter, the answer to those questions are very clearly, yes, there's going to be plenty of opportunity, and yes, you can make a, a very good salary in these fields. Um, most of the opportunities are going to be for four year or beyond, so bachelor's degree uh, and beyond, but we have many students that upon graduation with us do enter the field and they make very good salaries for our local area. Okay. Now, one of the sites that I always ask my students to visit, I teach a class called Computer Science One. And one of the first things we do in there is we visit this website. It's, uh, it's right here. It's www.bls.gov. Don't worry about the rest of it. But BLS stands for Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it's a government website and it's very well done. And there's something out there called the Occupational Handbook. And uh, it is a wealth of information if you're still trying to figure out what it is you want to do for a career. Or if you say, I want to be in computers, but I really don't know what area of computers I want to focus on. There's a wealth of knowledge out there. It's very easy to navigate. I'm just going to show you a little bit of that today. and. Uh, I'll start by clicking one of my favorite links that really exposes uh, the number of jobs that are out there. So I'm going to go ahead and just click this link. And you can see this is the most new jobs. This is, again, not maintained by FMCC. This is maintained by uh, the United States uh, government, specifically the Bureau of Labor Statistics. 20 occupations with the highest projected numeric change in employment. They also have median pay on here. And one of the ones you'll see is number four on the list out of 20, uh, software developers, software quality assurance analysts and testers. You can see that there are projected from 2019 to uh, 29, so a little outdated, but not too bad. 316,000 more jobs added, and you can see the median pay. 
Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not going to stand here in front of you and tell you that when you graduate from FNCC, that you're going to make $110,000 a year. That is a median rate, and again, most of the uh, people that are in this field would have a minimum of a four-year degree, a bachelor's degree. Okay, you can see it's a very high salary, and there are lots of jobs that are going to be available and are available over the next uh, eight years, based on the data that's on the board right now. You can see, you know, some of the ones that are here on top. Um, you can see, you know, home health and personal care aids. There's going to be over a million jobs. You can see the median pay of twenty-seven thousand. Fast food and counter workers. Um, you can see there's a lot of jobs available there at twenty-three thousand. Cooks and restaurant at twenty-eight thousand. But then you see number four on the list again, three hundred sixteen thousand jobs with one hundred ten. So you can see there's a considerable bump up from salary once you hit the fourth out of 20 on this list. Okay. So that's one way to look at number of jobs and the uh, median salary. Um, here's another way to look at it, and that's percent growth. So you can see, again, this is the 20 occupations with the highest percent change of employment. Uh, again, two, uh, 2019 through 2029. And one that I want to point out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, number 10 on the list is information security analysts. So that would be connected, for example, to our cybersecurity program. And you can see it's, it's expected to have 31% growth over the next, uh, well, at that time, 10 years, right, from 2019, but here we are in 2021. So over the next eight years, 31% growth. That is huge growth. Most most growth rates that you'll find for occupations are less than 5%. So this is six times the growth rate. And uh, again, for these types of positions, information security analysts or cybersecurity, it's just over 100,000. So, um, Really, really good news there as well. So really what I want to point out here is a few things. Number one, there is and will be for many years to come opportunities to get good jobs. Um, and these are well-paying jobs. You can see the numbers here and where it rates compared to some of the other positions that you see up here on the board as well. So I want to point that out. Also, I want to point out just the BLS website. It's a great website. Uh, it's on, I gave everybody a handout, so you'll see uh, BLS.gov. You don't have to put in the whole thing, the whole URL. So I'll just go up here and show you what I mean. If you just type www.bls.gov, see what I typed up there? BLS.gov, right? So at that point, when you go in here, again, a wealth, not, you know, I know, like I think you mentioned education, right? You can tons of stuff about the education field and different positions and by state you can break it down by state by region there's just all sorts of ways and i think it's very intuitive uh, to figure out how to use the site i like to go right here and show my students this information here occupational outlook handbook that's where i pulled those two charts off for you guys so i'm going to go ahead and click on that and um, you know, I have a lot of students that come in and, you know, the only thing they want to do is make a lot of money. So they don't care what the job is as long as they make a lot of money, which I don't necessarily feel that's the best way to uh, determine what you want to do with the rest of your life. But anyways, they do have browse occupations by highest pain, fastest growing. I showed you these two and field of degree. So again, you can go ahead and click on these things. And uh, I'll just click on highest pain. Um, as you may guess, a lot of it has to do with the medical field. You know, a lot of these high paying jobs, right? So these are the 20 highest paying positions. Um, but I am glad to see on that list, computer and information systems managers. Okay, again, not after two years. This is something probably after a master's degree. So even beyond four years, but uh, it's on the top 20. It's always on the top 20 and the uh, salary is usually very, very good. Um, and mobility. You can do these types of careers anywhere, not just in Fulton and Montgomery County, but 
you know, if you if you want to move, maybe to the West Coast, you want to move south, wherever you want to go, the, there's going to be opportunities wherever you go as well, wherever you move to. All right, so that's the BLS website, and uh, just show you one more on here, field of degree. So again, it's not just for computer-related careers. You can see there's a whole wealth of stuff, like you mentioned education, right? So you could click here, and it's a pretty easy website to navigate. Of course, I am going to click on computer and information technology, and uh, they show you the total number of uh, number of people employed in the field. Now, this is a wide variety of, of careers. Um, you can see the median pay is 83000 Now you might say, well, why is that less than those other ones? Well, that other one is focused on cybersecurity and information security. This is all careers. Anybody from a uh, help desk to a uh, hardware technician to a uh, data analyst, this is everybody's uh, median and annual salary. So, you know, some interesting stats. When you compare it, you can see that it's significantly better than all other fields. Right? So that's pretty neat to see. You can see that the employment is a fairly large chunk of the 55 million jobs that are out there. You can see that the percent of the employed part-time, 8% versus out in all other fields, it's 15, so it's less than half. So in other words, people have full-time positions here, not part-time. So that's really cool. Percent uh, employed in occupations requiring at least a bachelor's degree. It is higher in this field. You probably guessed that, right, with computer-related programs that in many cases you do need to go the additional ten, uh, two years. Uh, we do encourage it. We don't obviously force you to do that. Um, and, you know, if after two you want to stop and look for a job, uh, we help you with that as well. Okay? All right. So that's my DLS.gov. So, again, this can help anybody in this room right now, not just those that are in computer-related fields. So how can FMCC help you towards uh, getting some of these jobs that I talked about or careers that I talked about? Well, we have three programs, and I'm not going to go through all the nitty-gritty details. You have handouts from, uh, from me about those. One of those is computer science. One is computer networking and cybersecurity. I think the yellow one is uh, computer science. And then the cybersecurity, I think, is more of a purple color. And did I get that right? And then it's the green, the cybersecurity. It should be right at the top. Yeah, yep. Yep. Uh, computer information systems is the green. Yep. And then the cybersecurity, I'm sorry, is the purple one. So you can see all of the details of what courses you need and what semesters we recommend that you take those courses. What I would like to point out, though, is that those three degrees are a little bit different in this regard. Some of those, two of those are AS degrees, Associates in Science. And what that means to you is this. Those degrees are designed for transfer. Okay, so you'll find less computer-related courses, but more general studies type courses so that you can transfer to a four-year institution and focus on whatever it is, cybersecurity, software development, at your four-year institution, okay? So, uh, but that doesn't mean you don't take, you know, many computer courses. At least 30 of those credits are gonna come from computer-related courses. All right, so they are designed for transfer. The other one, AAS, that's our Computer Information Systems Program, that is designed to seek employment, okay? So after two years, um, that's where, you know, you, you take that if you were uh, thinking that you want to be employed after two years instead of going on another two years. With that being said, we have many students that transfer to four-year schools with the AAS degree. So I don't want you to think it's non-transferable because that's not the case. Um, but if you know I want to transfer to a four-year school, we would highly encourage you to pick either computer science or computer networking and cybersecurity. And better yet, if you know where you want to transfer, and we do have a fair number of students who know where they want to go after us, um, your second year with us, we work with that school with you. We, we work with the school to find out exactly what they want because you can take what are called electives. And we would have you take the electives that match up with that school and what they want you to come there with. Okay, we help you with that. We work with you and that uh, four-year institution. Okay. 
Um, and then real quickly, the computer science program, that follows something called the SUNY transfer path, which in a nutshell, it means this. If you take our program, you should be able to transfer to a SUNY school, State University of New York school, um, and keep all of your credits. In other words, they all transfer to the four-year school as long as you received a C or higher, okay? The computer networking and cybersecurity program follows what's called CompTIA's curriculum. CompTIA is a national organization. They're known for testing and certifications. Um, some of you may have heard of, for example, A plus certification, which is a hardware certification. That comes through CompTIA. Our networking and cybersecurity program uh, basically follows the four core courses of CompTIA's uh, program. Okay, and that would be A plus certification, which is hardware, network plus, which is networking, and then we have security plus, which is uh, cybersecurity, and then there is a fourth course uh, where it's cybersecurity administration. Okay, and again, it follows CompTIA's curriculum. And then lastly, <coughs> information systems program like I said people see deployment after that but I don't want you to think you can't transfer because you can um, we think we have what are called articulation agreements with some schools where they take you as a junior and then the last thing I want to mention before I entertain questions from you is uh, just you know FMCC I've been here uh, over 20 years as I mentioned when I first started um, you know I, I don't think I, not only is TRIO like a family, I, I think in many cases all of our programs and the people who teach in our programs, uh, because we're a small institution, it feels like a family. I get to know my students, my students get to know me, uh, and we like that. We have small classrooms, especially in the areas that we're in um, with computer-related programs. You might be in a class with 10 or 12 people, and uh, that's good because we get to know each other really well. Um, so we also do something called office hours, which time that we set away, set apart in our schedule that's there for you to come and visit us uh, in our offices. Now, with COVID, there might be some restrictions on that this semester. Uh, as you know, things are breaking today. Uh, so uh, normally what they're used for, though, is a student to come in our office and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, and, you know, maybe get help directly from us outside of the classroom. So all of us do that uh, as, as part of what we do with our, with our teaching load. Um, also internships. Internships are certainly a possibility in the computer-related programs. And uh, you have to earn your way into an internship. And what I mean by that is we don't just let anybody have an internship. Um, you, have to have, you have to receive what's called a faculty recommendation. And in this area, I would be one of those people who would recommend you. And uh, we do have some baseline requirements, and that is at least a 3.0 uh, for an internship. Okay, and you could probably imagine we want to make sure that it's good for you, but also good for the employer who's offering the internship, and that's why we have to set some baseline requirements for those internships. Okay, that's just a little bit about the programs. Uh, Arlene told me I had 10 minutes. I think I've used all of that, and maybe a little bit more. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Anybody, feel free to ask. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, with your CompTIA uh, uh, networking and cybersecurity program, as um, you follow along with that curriculum, do you actually, do you actually get certifications through that? Um, only if you, so you're, the answer to that is only if you pursue taking the exam. We don't offer the certification exams here. Um, so we follow that curriculum, but it doesn't mean that we provide the certification at the end. So what we've had some students do with some of the courses, when they complete the course, they sign up, pay the fee. There is a fee to take the exam. And uh, they pay the fee, and you know, hopefully they pass and receive the certification. Then that certification comes directly from CompTIA, which is nationally recognized certification. Um, as opposed to FMCC, you know, saying you completed the course, CompTIA stands for Computer Technology Industry Association. So, and it's got all your major players, all, you know, Microsoft, Google, Oracle, Dell, um, the list goes on and on, but it's your major players. So, because they're all involved, they want to make sure whoever receives those certification, you know, is held to a high, uh, to a certain standard. 
So yes, you can do that, but it would be up to you to sign up for that certification exam. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions for me? Okay, um, I do have some cards. I'm going to leave them with Arlene. Um, they have my phone, my extension in my office, and my email address. If you have any questions that come up afterwards, I'm just going to put them on this table over here, and then you can help yourselves. And I just want to make an announcement. Um, this is very informal, so if you have to get up and use the restroom, feel free to do that. The restrooms are located in the hall yesterday, so. Sometimes two hours later, it's a lot of time to say. All right. Just, uh, yeah. Presentation. You can tell he's a computer guy. <laughs> I've left my stuff out here <laughs> all summer long. Um, so our next professor, the uh, next professor is uh, Alex Henderson. She is the chair of the business department. She sent a video along. Uh, but like computer science, the business program has a lot of different opportunities. You can be a straight transfer student for business administration. You can do the AAS um, in management and get a job right after two years. You can do accounting and either transfer or get a job after two years. And you can also do uh, business uh, technical specialists where maybe you want to do or you want to work in an office. Um, so there's a lot of different programs. She's not going to go into detail. She's going to give you more of an overview of her perspective as a advisor and oh dear i think we lost her message okay uh, let me see if i can find it i had it minimized but uh, Well, while I look for that, I'm going to play this other professor, Paula Brown Weinstock. Hi, everybody. My name is Paula Brown Weinstock. I teach psychology and sociology classes here at FMCC. I am so excited to be a part of your welcome. I wish I could be there in person, but I can't. But there was no way I was going to pass up an opportunity to welcome you all to FMCC. Come this fall, I'll be starting my 22nd year at FM. I love my job. I love all the people that I work with. I love what I do. And I, most of all, I love my students. So there was no way I was going to miss up this opportunity to greet you all and say welcome to the FM family. I don't know about you all, but I am so excited to be on campus in the fall. I'll be starting my 22nd year. I am so looking forward to being in the uh, classroom, and I'm hoping this is the last time that I'm talking to students through a computer. It's been a year and a half since we've been in the classroom. I don't know about you all, but I am excited to be there. So I'm also excited that you chose FMCC. What a smart decision that you made. You are going to discover today two things. Um, in a nutshell about FM, we are a family and we have a lot to offer. You're going to have a great experience here at FM. Let's start with the family part. We care about you. We care about your future. We care about your success. I'm not a professor who just walks into class and spews off my information and then walks out of the classroom. No, 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 no. I want to get to know you. I want to help you discover who you are and what you want for your future. And all the people that you're going to meet today, all of my colleagues, they're here for the same reason, to help you discover you and have the best, brightest future that you possibly can have. I have no doubt you're going to leave here today feeling that family feel. Um, and you are now a part of our family. So I wasn't going to miss up this opportunity, again, to welcome you to this family. The other thing that you're going to discover about FM today, I think, is, holy cow, we have a lot to offer. Yes, we're a small community college, but we have a ton of resources available to you. So as a student, it's your job to take advantage of all those resources, right? 
So as your professor, well, I'm probably not going to be all of your professors, but as a professor, I'm speaking from my colleagues, um, take advantage of those resources. Come to class. That's probably one of the most important things. If you ask any student who's been successful in college, what do you think is the number one reason why you were successful? They'll tell you, I went to class. Sounds simple, but come to class, right? The other thing is take advantage of the resources. And one of those is office hours. Uh, professors have office hours. I have five office hours a week set aside just for you, just for you to come in and talk about what's going on in class, what's going on in your life, how can I help you, to help you understand what kinds of things you should be thinking about for your future. So please take advantage of those. Take advantage of the tutoring services we have. Take advantage of the library um, that we have. Take advantage of the clubs that we have, the activities that are going to be going on. Join a sport if you want. Just get to know all of the possibilities that are offered here on campus. Research shows that if you are actively engaged in the classroom and actively engaged in the life outside the classroom, you're much more likely to be successful in school. I know that. Um, that was what my whole dissertation was on. And I do want to get to know my students. So I'll tell you, you're not a number here. Um, I've had students over to my house, several students over to my house for dinner. Right there, that's where we have dinner and have great conversations. Um, I've had students over to bake uh, cookies for an upcoming bake sale. It's on this other side here, I can't show you where we bake. Um, I've hiked up mountains uh, with students because I want to get to know them. I want to be a part of their FM experience. I want to help get them on the right track. Everybody you meet here today wants to help get you on the right track. Um, so. You're going to be overwhelmed today because you're going to get so much information, but that's okay. What's most important, show up on September 1st when classes start um, and ask questions. We're all here to help. So this is just the beginning of being a part of our FM family. Welcome. Have a great day. Sorry I couldn't be there. Bye. She's so excited. I'm actually going to find this yeah. other video. Why don't we take a five minute break? You can use restroom stretch. Um, we're going to pass out laptops because the next part after uh, the video from the business faculty is actually getting on laptops and learning how to get into your classes. So take a break, stretch, walk around.
And just so you all know, we are recording this on YouTube Live. We have some viewers, and I, I want to say a shout out to Anastasia, who is our business administration student who's watching live because she just emailed me and said she is. So um, it, there may be others as well that had signed up to watch. So just FYI. Okay. It'll be on our website if you want to go back and rewatch the videos for any reason. Almost there. I had had a download of that. Mr. Watt came in. Got parts. Hi, my name is Alex Henderson, and I am one of the professors in the business division here at FM, and I'd like to hear you. Okay. To to our programs. Um, we're really excited to have you as a student here on behalf of me and my colleagues, um, Mrs. Divis, um, Dr. Swain, and Professor Zuckerman. And I'd just really like to um, tell you you've made a very good business decision. Your first good business decision as a business student is coming to FM and getting a quality education at an affordable price. So go you. Okay, now, what else do you need to know? In addition to being a professor here in the business division, I'm also an academic advisor. I'm in my academic advising office and my office on campus, which is located in the Student Development Center. Please feel free to stop by and see me. If you are doing one of our programs all online, uh, we're happy to either have a virtual meeting or talk on the phone or um, communicate via email. However we do it, what we want to do is help you succeed, help you reach your career and educational goals. So please um, use us. While that sounds, uh, sounds bad, it's really not. We're here for you. We want to help you succeed. If you have questions, please just ask us. Um, one of the things that I really recommend in order to succeed is uh, always turn your work in on time, even if it's not your best work. Um, it's a good idea just to turn it in on time, even if you want to put a note to the professor that says, hey, I kind of like a little more time to work on this, but, um, you know, I, I, I just, I ran out of time and, and I'd like more time. And then we can make a decision whether or not to give you that time based on how well you've done the assignment. Um, but, but don't, you know, if you just come and say, can I have more time, that's, that's tricky business. So. Um, get a good calendar, get a good plan, how you're going to do that. Um, if you need help, ask for it. If you have a learning disability and you need extra test time or some other type of thing like that, get it. Uh, use it. Those are all good things to do here. I have ADD. Um, I use those services in order to be successful in college. So if that is going to help you, make sure you ask the Academic Advising Center how to, how to succeed at that. Um, and let's see, what other helpful hints can I get? I think that if you're planning to attend classes on campus, then I, I recommend attending them. Uh, it's usually typically much easier if you attend. Obviously, if you're healthy and you know all the things, you know, let's pretend that COVID doesn't exist. I'll just make <laughs> it uh, So you know, obviously, different rules for COVID. But if you're attending uh, classes, you should attend because we're going to teach you what you need to know and. And, um, and you'll be able, be able to build a relationship with your professors and give you letters of recommendation or help with career and transfer advice and all of those things. So um, I really like to think that students benefit from attending classes. If you're going to attend fully online, just make sure you're organized. And if you do get behind, you're overwhelmed because you're, you have a lot going on, which can happen online, it can happen in class too. Just communicate with the professors right away and say, this is what's happening. Um, 
and we can usually help you. So we don't uh, we don't want to stand on rooftops and say that you can turn in assignments late and all of those things um, and make these huge announcements. But oftentimes we can work with students who are going through a challenging situation, either in their personal life or their work life. So it's at least worth asking. Okay, so. Um, I highly recommend that, it's, it's, and especially if you do it early, if you know the research paper's due on Friday, you thought you were going to be able to do it, you know, work on it for six hours on Wednesday, something goes awry, and does, that doesn't work, on Wednesday communicate, don't wait until Monday to communicate, okay? So uh, turn work in on time, but for some reason you can't communicate with your professors. Um, Again, my office is here in the Student Development Center, and uh, which is near the theater on campus. This is, this is the place where uh, academic advisors are housed and, and other support staff. So come see us if you need something. In the meantime, we really look forward to having you in our classes, um, and, and thank you for choosing FM. Way to go. Be a reader. All right. See you soon. All right, so that's Mrs. Henderson. Yeah, she can share a lot of these for a minute. We have put laptops on your spaces, and you may be asking the question, how do I communicate with my professors? Obviously, it's easy if you're in class, right? So oftentimes, if you come five minutes before the class starts, you can catch the professor to ask a quick question or stay five minutes after the class ends to ask a quick, quick question. You heard this thing called office hours. At a community college, faculty have to be available to students five hours a week. That time is set aside just for you, just for you to ask them questions. So they'll post on something called their syllabi, which is a paper that they give you, or they'll put it on the uh, on the computer, which I'll show you in a minute, um, that will talk about when their office hours are. And they'd be the same every week. So maybe a professor uh, has an office hour on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 o'clock. Those are set office hours that you can go and see them. And maybe you say, well, I've got class, or I'm busy, or whatever. You can always make an appointment as well. Professors who choose to work at a community college, they have all the credentials of professors who work at four-year campuses, but they love students. If you, you may know of some of your friends that might be going away to four-year colleges, and oftentimes in the freshman and sophomore year, the classes aren't even taught by the professors. They're taught by graduate students who are trying to get experience being a professor. And so the professors are busy teaching the graduate students, they're busy doing their research, and they're writing their books, and doing all of that. Here, our professors have chosen, they could have worked at a four-year campus. Many of them have their PhDs, many of them have, as you heard, 20, 30 years of teaching experience. But they've chosen instead to work here because they love the community college students. They love being able to help students and see students regularly. Um, I went to the University at Albany after my, I was an FM student as well, and then I went to Albany, and you were in a class of 500 people. You do not even know, the professor would not even know you. You know, unless you sat in the very front row every day or something, but they're just, they have no idea who you are. Here, your professors will know who you are, they'll know your name, you'll probably be involved in clubs that they might be the, uh, the faculty organizers for, and you really can get that one-on-one -on -one experience. And that's so great, because as you're looking for a job or looking to transfer after FM, they can write you letters of recommendation. As you heard Paula Brown Weinstein say, they come to her house. That's not unusual. The professors really love their students, and they love to have involvement with them. So you can see them in their office hours. You can obviously telephone them. Their all their phone numbers are on their syllabi. They're on the website. You can email them, of course, and you can also have virtual meetings with them. Of course, that's one thing COVID did is made us all specialists <laughs> in virtual meetings. Uh, so. I'm going to show you something that's called Blackboard, which is our environment for students to have their courses online. Because even if your course is not online, 
the professors say, well, this is actually a great way for us to put all the assignments and to communicate with our students. So they're keeping the Blackboard um, shells, if you will. Whoever used Google Classroom in high school, okay, similar. Not as exciting as Google Classroom looks a little bit nicer. Ours is a very plain looking, um, but it's got the same idea that everything that you need, all your assignments, your syllabi, videos from your professors are in Blackboard. Tomorrow, you can actually go into Blackboard and see all your courses. You can see the syllabi, you can see what the professors have put out there, and they will even encourage you to engage with them by sending them a course message or no. And so today we're practicing that a little bit. I've uh, created a course in Blackboard called Orientation um, where you can communicate with me. I'm the teacher of the course. And by the way, I'm Arlene Spencer. Most of you, I didn't even introduce myself at the beginning. Most of you have gotten messages back and forth from me regarding orientation. I'm also in charge of the library and our tutoring programs on campus and our academic coaching programs on campus. So maybe you're part of the TRIO program, that's great. But even if you're not, we still have free tutoring, we have free help, we have free academic coaching for all kinds of students that you don't need to be qualified by income or first generation or um, I forget what the other word, a disability. So all students can take advantage of all of our free help and our free tutoring services. So I'm gonna dive right in for a few slides and then we're gonna actually practice, okay? We're sort of ahead of schedule, so I think we'll be probably um, oops. So this stuff is in that Blackboard course that most of you are in, and you'll see that in a moment. But the first thing I want to show you is our website. Who's been to our website? Everybody, right? You had to apply through the website. Uh, the website has actually got a lot of resources for you that you don't need passwords for. Mom and dad can look on the website, get the information as well. So of course, this is our website address at mcc.edu. There we saw Paula in the video. She's prominently featured on the front page. She's one of our most loved professors. Um, and at the top, we have MyFM, the Evans Library, Blackboard, and contact information. We also have MyFM here. So, those are where you're going to log in for your information. So, um, if you were to choose the library, and the library, of course, is where everything is important is housed, right? So, the library is the hub of the campus. Not only can you go to the library to read and study and do your work, these computers are from the library. So if you didn't bring your laptop with you and you need to do some work, we have both big computers and these laptops that you can borrow for an hour or two while you're working on campus. So very, very uh, important to go to the library and use the library. Under the library, there's something called orientation and you'll see these modules. I encourage you as your homework tonight to go to this page, read over all of this information. It will be a review of what we've done today, but it will be a chance for you to read it over. The biggest thing that I want to focus on right now is the technology. You can learn all these terms. I told you Blackboard. When I was a kid, there was a Blackboard in the classroom. You had white chalk and erasers. Now it's an electronic place for you to do your assignments. MS Teams, that's micro, MS means Microsoft. We are a Microsoft campus. I asked who knew Google Classroom. That's because your high schools were Google. We are the competitor. We are Microsoft. So um, Microsoft, uses a conferencing, video conferencing thing called Teams. There's Google Meet, there's Teams, there's uh, Zoom. You know, all of these are video conferencing platforms, right? So Teams is 
the way, if you were to have a class that was either online or partially online, or I hope this never happens, but if some of you get COVID and you have to do stream into your classes because you're home and you, you know, you, you don't want to miss class, even if you're quarantined, right? So you would stream into the class. The teacher would be just like I am now, teaching the class, the students in the classroom. But he or she is going to record every session. And they're going to be running it live on Teams. But the professor is the one who's going to give you the key to that. So that communicate early kind of thing. So not everybody in the world can see the Teams live. He'll have to or she'll have to give you the code to do that or permission to do that. So it, some people will be doing it live, perhaps, or maybe you have to, some reason. Um, and it could be not COVID. It could be you broke your foot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons why you might not have a medical reason not to come to campus. The professor can also give you a taped version of the lecture. But unlike last year, we hope that we are not shutting down. When last year we shut down and everybody went virtual. We don't want to do that anymore. And that's why everybody has to be vaccinated, right? So if uh, there are no guarantees in life, but even if you're vaccinated, you may get sick or maybe somebody in your family may get sick, whatever, work with your professor so that you could either tune in live through Teams or you can watch the recording later. That's an important thing to remember, but you have to communicate with your professor. So leave a phone call or an email and just explain the reason why. It cannot be, oh, I overslept. I want to watch the recording. That's not a valid reason to watch the recording. That's just like any kid skipping class. So the professor may hold back the video because that's not a legitimate reason. Uh, Mr. Waffle, who was just here talking to you, he's of a different mindset. He believes that everybody should have all resources. So he's going to open up his videos regardless if you overslept or not overslept, because that's his personal philosophy, that he would rather that you have access to the information. But some professors are old school, and which means that they expect you to attend class. And having no reason to just skip class, you're going to have to have a penalty the penalty would be that you miss the information, right? So, um, but there is a backup if you're sick. We're gonna go over the FM email. Again, a lot of you probably had Gmail, right, in high school. We're not, we're not a Google campus, we're a Microsoft campus. So your email is done through Microsoft Outlook. There's a suite of, what we call a suite, uh, a grouping of Microsoft products called Microsoft Office 365. And the Microsoft Office 365, as I said, is a suite. It's a grouping of a lot of Microsoft applications, including uh, your Word, which is if you're going to type something. So you're not saving it in Google anymore. You're saving it in Microsoft Word. Um, the, that's the word processing program. You have your email, which is Outlook, Microsoft Outlook and your other things, PowerPoint, Excel, all of these applications are given to you free. I mean, you're sort of paying for it in your tuition, but they're included while you're a student here at FMCC. So you have a free access. You do not have to go out and buy the Microsoft Office 365. If I were to go and want that on my personal computer at home, I would have to go to a store and buy Microsoft Office 365. Not so as students, you're getting use of that for free until six months after you graduate or after you, you exit FMCC. So utilize it. It's a great, um, they're hoping of course that you love Microsoft so much that when you graduate, you do go out and buy it for your own personal computer. But you will be accessing your your Blackboard, Teams, email, and Microsoft applications through the internet. 
and you say, of course I will be. Well, you're not downloading it on your laptops. You're not downloading it on your uh, devices. You're accessing it through the internet. Everything is in the, that cloud. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're on a borrowed laptop from the library or if you're on your home computer at your desk at home. Everything is still there in the cloud and you can access it anywhere. So that's the beauty of Microsoft is that you have that access anywhere. So please do go to the library website and just click through this information. This is another big one, the MyFM. The MyFM student resources, and I'm gonna show you another slide in a moment for MyFM. That's, a, it houses a lot of videos to teach you how to do stuff with the Microsoft uh, applications. So there's a lot of tutorial videos there. And the biggest thing is you forgot your password. So you can just go here. Remember, you don't need a password to get into the library part of the website. You just need to log into fmcc.edu and click library. And then you find this, and you can go there, and you can say, help, I've got my password, and get it reset. Now, of course, it's reset during college work hours. So if it's a Sunday afternoon, you're out of luck. But if it's Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., somebody will be back and we set it for you and help you. So that's a free area, easy area you can find. Now, when you go to My FM, I talked about that, My FM, you probably, your academic advisors went over this with you a little bit because you are uh, registered now, you're registered students, they probably told you about this. Can everybody go to fmcc.edu and go to My FM? Okay, there's a couple ways to do it, and you're probably going to get student resources. So you can click on student resources once you get to my account. You, your login and credentials should be in your file if you don't remember that. If you change that, it, it's going to be different than what was in your packet. But that was the original login information. I'm glad to see so many parents in the room today. That's really helpful. As your students, um, sometimes we're getting a lot of information today. So it's good that there's extra views listening. Yep, that's it. You can click on student resources. Yeah, and then enter your, your login and your password. Okay. And you can change your login and password to something a little bit more manageable. They've given you this really high we wanted you to walk away today knowing how to log in <laughs> remember your personal email that people have been communicating with you we're not going to be communicating through your personal email anymore. You can keep your Gmail account. You can keep your whatever you've been using, Yahoo or whatever. But your professors are only going to use your FMCC email. They're only going to be sending you stuff to the official college email. So I highly recommend that you check it every day. You can download a Outlook application on your phone so that you can check your college email all the time. Okay. It's free. Okay.
Okay, is everybody here to this page? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep talking. You can catch up with me as you as you move along. But you're going to see, you probably see this page come up, and there's tabs at the top, and they're also here, are these pictures. So if you want to check your bill, or you want to check your financial aid, or you want to check your class schedule, you're going to go to Bursar, which means billing, or student accounts, financial aid office, and the registrar office. That's where you're going to find a lot of information pertaining to you specifically. Uh, academic support services, that's where you're going to find information on tutoring, library, and other help. Then you're going to see advising and registration. After this semester, you had an advisor help you do your schedule this semester. You sat down with an advisor and they actually typed it in the computer probably in front of you or you were doing it through a Zoom call. And uh, they created the schedule with your input. Next semester, <coughs> you can have that meeting with your advisor, but you can have that meeting early and kind of get an idea of the courses that you need. But you can actually go on and register yourself after your first semester. So you can go here to advising and registration <coughs> and do that. We're not going to go that deep today. You can play around with this. I really highly recommend that you do play around with it. Go home, try it out. You can't make any mistakes. You're not going to do anything that's going to be a problem. So just click on everything and kind of see what's there. And then finally, the last one are tutorials and technical support. That's where you're going to find a lot of how to do this. How do I change my password? How do I um, make an appointment with my academic advisor? And you can watch those very short videos. So you can see these are some of the videos. Um, how to download, how to use Teams, how to use one, there's something called OneDrive in Microsoft, which is a, a nice um, place to store your files. I use it all the, all the time. Uh, Office Outlook 365, all of the applications. Uh, if you have used, well, most of you probably haven't used OneDrive before. But how to make an appointment with an advisor, how to schedule a tutoring session, and how to use that self-service, how to make, how to register for classes. So there's all these short little videos. And oftentimes they're going to, when you click on a video, it's going to look like this. So this one is a short one on how to use Office 365. Again, uh, this one is particularly email. So I would recommend that you watch it. This PowerPoint is in your packet, all right? So when you go home, you can just open up your packet. You have the copy of the PowerPoint. Okay, we're going to go to someplace, that Blackboard page. And remember at the beginning, at the top of the website, there was three choices. There was MyFM, the library, and Blackboard. When you go back and then go into Blackboard. Okay, a quick way to do it is just to click on the FM icon. Oh, 
there's a so we're going you said the blackboard yep once you get to the regular website go to the full website then you land the blackboard yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all I have to do is we set the we set Okay, so some of us are still logging in. We're almost done, guys. Okay, so you can only read button. And you logged in. All right, cool. So, unless you registered for classes after August 10th, I can't guarantee this for everybody, but if you registered before August 10th, you were put into an orientation class, um, which is a little practice course that I created. So let's see if everybody, or if you can't log in, if you follow along with a friend who's next to you and see if you can get into, yes, it's going to be on the side, it's going to say orientation. We're still having logging issues. Feel around and follow. change your home screen, you can make it different colors, you can do all kinds of things. I'm going to get off of this picture and I'm going to go live now. Okay?
So let me just go live. Okay. So. So I'm live now on the course. It makes it a little bit bigger for you to see. My copy didn't really. But this part here, FM library, tutoring, career transfer services, this is something that you will always see for every course you have. So it's really pinned right there. And the reason why is we want you to use the library services. We want you to use the free tutoring services. And here is the link to how to schedule tutoring sessions. We want students that make it easy for you. So it's there on every course, right in your face. Uh, you also have this little uh, SUNY online student orientation. You can go on that today. Well, actually, no, tomorrow morning, tomorrow. Um, but you can, if you're in this class, you have it right now. Those of you that are registered in the orientation course, you can go. Um, there's a little red thing in the corner here next to my name, Arlene Spencer. What's this red number one mean? What's that mean? I have a notification. Something changed in one of my courses. And you were on the notifications earlier in the back. You were, you can see there's a message. So either your professor's writing a message to the class, and then in this case, I might have made a change to the orientation court. Yeah, I added the Professor Henderson's video. And then you can say, oh yeah, I've already watched that video, dismiss. And then that little alert will go away. I had a student I was working with last year. He had over 100 in his little alerts. And I'm like, how come you never checked your alerts? Your professors are giving you information. He's like, I was scared. I was scared to click on it. You can't be scared to click on it. <laughs> You're not gonna do anything. Uh, you gotta just play around with it. You can't make any mistakes, really. The nice thing about something like this is all the information is always there. You can't delete the information. You can, you can um, say you've read it, but it'll still be there. So you can go back and reread it. Okay, so those of you that are in this course, you've got this. So raise your hand if you're here. I know some of you are having issues, but okay, so most of you are, are following along. Good. And again, even when courses are 100% in person, your professors are still gonna be using this. They're gonna be using it if there's an online textbook, you're going to read your textbook in Blackboard. They're going to be using it for tests and homework assignments. You just submit everything through Blackboard. So you really need to be comfortable with Blackboard. They found last year that this was a good thing to keep. Rather than dealing with lots of papers and collecting papers from students in class, everybody just uploads it, and then the professor has it by the due date. Different professors will have different due dates. And so you just need to be aware, be very organized. There's something called the course syllabi. I don't have one for this fake course that I created, but there is an example of one that I'll show you. But tomorrow, when you go in here, you'll see all of your courses and you'll see the syllabi that the professors have created. What's a syllabi? What's a syllabus? Syllabi is more than one syllabus. What, what is that? Is that what you should be looking for? Yeah, it's basically a contract between you and the teacher. The teacher is, is writing down, this is my name, this is how to contact me, these are my office hours, and this is what you're going to be studying. Maybe they might include things like quiz one will be on September 13th. Test two will be on October 2nd. They might be that detailed. They'll probably tell you to read chapters one through three in the first week. All of that information <coughs> will be outlined in the syllabi. It's a contract. If you decide to keep that course, 
you are saying you have read the syllabus and you agree whatever rules the professor has in that syllabus that you agree and you're going to follow that or pay the consequences. So if the professor has an attendance policy, some do, some don't, if the professor says you can only miss three classes or if you miss more than that, you're going to be penalized by this much, you read that and you agree, okay, if I skip four classes, I'm in trouble, I'm going to lose 10 points or whatever on my attendance grade. So that's very important for you to read that. So again, tomorrow will be your day. You can go in here and see everything. Uh, some teachers use a calendar, some don't, especially if they're going to be meeting in person. But you can use the calendar. You can write in all your assignments and what you need to do to keep yourself organized. Or you can use the calendar in uh, Microsoft Outlook. Okay, so I'm going to go to the student version and then to course content. Course content is where everything's going to be. So that's your main area, course content, right there. When you click on course content, you're going to see something like this. For every class, what's at the top? Tutoring. We cannot stress this enough that we have free tutoring for every student. We don't want you to struggle on your homework. If you're taking a math class and it's too much for you, get help. We have help every day, and we also have help virtually in some evenings and some weekends. It's free, get help, use it. Um, and so again, not only is it on the front page of your Blackboard, it's here under course content. It's a link to make an appointment. You don't need an appointment. If you want to just walk into the writing center or the math lab, you can do that. But if you're home for some reason, maybe you're sick again, I hope it never happens, but maybe you are out and you need to have a virtual tutoring appointment, you can make an appointment and have a virtual tutoring appointment. Or if you're going to be doing it on the weekends or evenings, those will be virtual, obviously, because the campus is closed. Okay, so in a normal class, there's 15 weeks in a semester, right? 15 weeks every semester. We start September 1. That week is considered a week, even though it's three days. So um, probably most teachers are going to have 15 modules. They may have one more, one less, but they may not show them all immediately because they don't want to scan them, right? They want you to be take it pace by pace, step by step. So they may only show module one tomorrow when you go into your course. And in this case, you can open up module one. And these, this is where I put all the information. So here's a sample syllabi. Some of you may have Mr. Fagan for your English class, but you can see a syllabi that looks, let's see if I can open it up without losing anything. And so he's got his office hours, his name. Um, he prefers to be called Mr. Fagan. Some professors will say, call me, like Paula Brown Weinstock, she'll say, call me Paula. Every professor is different. When you don't know, call them Mr. or Ms., right? Or a professor. Um, so some professors prefer the title. Others say, I can call them by my first name. Here's his contact information. When his office hours are, we talked about that, he must have five office hours. Or by appointment, and his email address. Some professors prefer you to email directly. Others prefer um, that you use Blackboard to contact them. And then he just talks about you should attend class physically in the classroom. But if you need to access it, this is how you do it through Blackboard. And um, just some other things about the course, the course description, the course learning outcomes. Um, resources, 
a textbook is required, materials. And you can go to the bookstore if you have questions about textbooks. But again, all of this will be tomorrow. You'll be able to go in and see this. And then his grading method. Every professor will put down their grading method in their syllabi. You'll see some people have lots of quizzes. Some people only have four tests or three tests. Everybody is different. And then um, more information that they might have. Okay, so that's an example of a syllabi. Uh, I also included the student handbook, which is also on our website, but it's a good resource for you to look at sometime. This uh, PowerPoint that I was showing you earlier is also in your folder. There's a, a, a version of it there. The message from Professor Paula Brown Weinstock. Oh, I'm sorry, there's the PowerPoint presentation. That was another uh, message. Okay, so then there's going to be some practice things for you to do. You don't have to do this right now, but practice sending me an email. How'd you get back? What? How'd you get back? I just okay. scrolled down. I just scrolled down on the page. Oh, you were in the syllabi. Yeah, don't be afraid. Okay. Um, there's course message. I would like you all to practice sending me a course message right now while you're in Blackboard, if you are in Blackboard. And then there's a survey. And the other resources are videos from other professors. So we'll be adding in, there's the one from Alex Henderson, we'll be adding in today's video that was a YouTube Live link. But course message. Course message is through Blackboard. So you're going to be brought here, and this is how you're going to submit your assignments if the professor wants to submit it through Blackboard. So you, you might have it saved as a file, either on your computer at home or in the cloud, Microsoft Word. And you could write in your, you know, English 103, paper number one and attach it to your note that you're sending to your professor. So I want you to send me a note. You can just say hi. You don't have to write in here in the com comments area. You can say hi or thanks or whatever you want to say to me. But I want you to practice doing it right now. Anybody who can. And when you're done with that, go back. Now, I've covered a lot in the few minutes that we've been here. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. My password was something you can not work. OK, yeah, but we're going to have to get your password reset by the registrar's office. So when we are done here, um, you can, yeah, you can take them up to the registrar's office, which is in the Student Development Center now. Sent me one. You should see a little um, that you sent something to me. Okay. Now, the final thing I would ask you to do is to go to the survey and hit the link, which is going to take you out of Blackboard to complete the survey on today's orientation. But I don't want you to leave here if you have any questions. But I do want to thank you for coming. Um, I think that having a, a few minutes here on campus, kind of know what to expect on the first day of school, and um, being able to get into Blackboard tomorrow, you'll really have a leg up on some of the other new students who did not make it to orientation. And when you're done, you're done. And the Office of Financial Aid, the Office, you can get your student ID today.
Thanks for coming.